This course starts from the very beginning and assumes you have no prior programming experience, but assumes you have some basic computer skills and can download stuff and install it and run program. This is a practical course. That means that as much as possible it's taught with examples. The examples are simple and hopefully easy to understand. They're designed to demonstrate just one or two things. Now early on I have to do a bit of explaining before we get into an example, but as things go along more and more of the course is taught by pure example. I hope you can bear with me through some of the early lecturing. I keep it to a minimum and just cover the stuff that you're actually going to use. Source code is provided for every example program shown in every lesson. Once you have your version of the Java compiler installed, you should be able to compile and run every one of them. And you should, so you can get a feel for how this thing actually works. To prevent confusion, care was taken that no two programs in the entire course have the same name. Also, they're organized by chapters, so you'll be able to quickly find the one you want. Everything starts by showing the fundamental shape of a Java program. It displays a line of text. The first program displays it as a response from the command line, and the second displays it in a window. The text in a window stuff deals with font selection, color selection, and measuring the font. And then we start looking at the small stuff. We look into character strings and arrays. And Oh, if you haven't worked with Java or C before, get ready for some really strange arithmetic operators. Anyway, we take a quick whirl around the basics. Then we go back up a few paces and look at the overall structure of a Java program. All that object-oriented stuff is explained in very simple terms. Once you see how something works, I give you the strange object-oriented word for it, so you have something to pin the word on when you get it. Then we dive right into graphics, so you can get a good idea of how the little stuff and the big stuff all work together to make a program. We'll be drawing pictures in the windows, and we'll be loading image files and displaying them in windows. Now that we know how to draw, the next logical thing is to make it move. Java animation is rather straightforward, but there are a couple of sneaky tricks you need to know about before you can make it work. I'll be showing you several examples, uh, each one of them with a slightly different slant. Then we shift gears and go into applets. Using all the stuff we learned previously, we experiment with displaying text and graphics in a window inside your web browser. Then we translate the animation trick into the applets and you're ready to go live on the internet with Java. Back to the applications again, this time using the mouse to drag stuff around a window. Next come the push buttons and the other forms of user input. There are all kinds of gadgets in Java that you can use to get a response from a user. All of these gadgets and whatnot need to be controlled. So we take a good close look inside at the software that's used to construct window layouts with buttons and text entry windows and so on. Not only do we have the top level window with user input devices, we create pop-up dialogues of various kinds that can provide a wide variety to the way that your user interfaces with your program. At the end, you'll be able to fill a window with just about anything you like, pull-downs and pop-ups, including a menu bar across the top of your windows. By the time you finish this course, you will be able to write just about any program you would like in Java. If there's something you don't know, you'll have a good idea of how to go about finding out about it. Java is huge, but this course was carefully devised to cover the fundamentals of the operative parts.